Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Fashion Week Online's Influencer Series and who better to be in the Influencer Series than the man himself, Mr. Killian Hennessy of the Killian World. I'm not going to just say brand because that would be understating it and we'll get into why I said world right now. Mr. Killian, we thank you humbly for being here. Thank you. Thank you for being in town for, for a little bit so we could grab Two you days. up. <laughs> Two days. So uh, I want to start off by just asking you, we talked a little about this off camera. Uh, I was reading about your thesis that you did. Interesting topic. I don't want to get it wrong. The se semantics of odors in search of languages common to gods and mortals. Close. Close? Okay. <laughs> Now, what age were you when, you when you wrote that thesis? 22. 20, so what inspired the thesis? What inspired you to get into the actual fragrance and perfume industry and kind of veer away from the cognac empire? I always knew that I never wanted to work in the cognac business, in the okay. family business, you okay. know? Okay. I always wanted to be able to wake up in the morning, look at myself in the mirror, mm -hmm. and realize that what I built, I built, built it with myself only mm -hmm. and not with the family name behind it. You know? mm. So that I knew since day one. Mm -hmm. The question was what, which subject was going to be my subject. Right. And uh, to be honest, I chose um, perfume a bit by, by chance. Mm -hmm. I was reading a lot of thesis that had been written prior to me. Mm -hmm. And one of the subjects that kept coming back when talking about perfumes mm -hmm. was the absence of common vocabulary amongst people to talk about a scent. Mm. And that led me to the my thesis, mm. which is the subject you mentioned. <laughs> and from there I was, um, in order to understand what I would be writing about, mm -hmm. I did a no school in parallel with my fifth year in college. Mm. So that was okay. a busy year. Right. Oh. And, and uh, <clears throat> at the end of the, my fifth year, I did an internship with one of the biggest perfume house. Mm -hmm. And I met my mentor there, Jacques Cavalier, who is today mm -hmm. the head perfumer at Louis Vuitton. Oh, so he's a small guy. No, small no. guy, yeah. Okay. I got okay. lucky again. <laughs> and, um, and from then I was hired by Dior mm -hmm. and I worked for Dior for two years. Okay. In New York, actually. Mm -hmm. Then I moved back to Paris and I started working for Paco Urban. Mm -hmm. And I worked for him for four years until I resigned to go join the Gucci group mm -hmm. and work with Alexander McQueen. Oh, rest in peace. Yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic. Fantastic time, genius. Yes. And uh, not easy, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what, when you touch creativity, it's never easy. Right. And uh, I worked for him for three years until I resigned again mm -hmm. to go work for Giorgio Armani. Oh, so you kept going I needed a qu I needed quietness <laughs> in my life at that time after three oh, years. So you went to all small places just to, yeah, got gotcha. you. And then I resigned again to sell my own brand because right. to be very honest, I was losing face at the end. Mm. The perfume industry had become too far mm -hmm. from what I had in envisioned when I started. Right, right. And I was ready to actually to go move into fashion. Well, you know, and it's interesting you brought up those fashion houses because that was my next question. Like after you worked at all of those houses, what did you take from working with each different fragrance house? and kind of incorporated into your own style or what did you see that was missing that you could fill as a niche as far as your brand itself? I learned different things in different houses. Mm -hmm. At, uh, with Paco Rabanne, I learned, it was a very small house, mm -hmm. and I learned that the only way to compete with the big, the big players mm -hmm. is by being overly creative. Mm -hmm. So creation was a big part of what we used to do at Paco Rabanne. Mm -hmm. With Lee, with Alexander McQueen, mm -hmm. He, I, I learned how to come up with a collection, uh, building it from boards and, and having boards in, in, your, in your studio and having collage of fabrics and words and images and creating a world mm -hmm. on board that was going to be your inspiration throughout the creation process of a collection. Okay. And up till today, today mm -hmm. this is still how I work on a new collection. Mm -hmm. So if you would go in my studio, it's all boards and every board is a different theme, a different collection mm -hmm. with potential names and fabrics and colors and, and accords possible. Mm -hmm. And so I have worlds there. Mm -hmm. And in a way it helps me to see what do I want right now? You know, mm -hmm. what do I feel that the customer would want? Mm -hmm. You know, at one point a perfume has to smell its own time, mm -hmm. like fashion, you know, right, if you, right. If you put clothes from the 70s, you're going to look like you're disguised. Right. <laughs> but it's still a pant, it's still a shirt, but the cut means and everything. Feel, yes. And in perfume, it's exactly the same thing. Mm. The way you cut, a, you, you cut or you 
write a formula mm -hmm. can either transport you to the 70s to the 80s or mm -hmm. make you very today mm -hmm. and uh, at Armani actually it was within the L'Oreal structure so it's mm -hmm. a big structure right. and I basically learned how to build a business really? which was very important because it allowed me to have a profitable company in year two so oh that, wow that's rare I know that's wow wow so that's good so you learned a lot from everyone now what was the thought process I want to say behind the scented jewelry because when I first learned of the scented jewelry <clears throat> it blew my mind and I thought I can't believe someone never thought of it sooner it's incredible huh? it was it was like because I'm very hard on fragrances where my skin doesn't take to them well and they easily wash off or just fade away after about maybe the hour or so. So I was thinking scented jewelry is perfect because you could wear it all day and still have the scent. And I don't have to worry about my skin washing it off or weather mm -hmm. conditions. So what, what made you really see that as something that was needed in the industry? And what made you even think about that? Because that was an ingenious idea. Well, many things actually. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, let's take one by one in a way. <laughs> so one thing that customers are asking me all the time mm -hmm. is body lotions and body creams to do the layering, you know? So mm -hmm. you layer your cream and right. then you put perfume so you can have like uh, an added um, diffusion right. of the perfume. Mm -hmm. And of course, at one point, I will end up doing body lotions and shower gels and yeah, body right. creams. But what I'm trying to do with the brand is really to elevate perfume. Okay. To, re to put perfume back on its pedestal, mm -hmm. to recreate a fascination for, for perfume by bringing real luxury, in, in, back in, um, taking luxury and really putting it into perfume. Okay. And thinking perfume as a real luxury accessory mm -hmm. and not as, as a disposable accessory. Mm. That's why all our bottles are refillable, that's why all our boxes are reusable. When you buy something from me, you'd keep either the bottle or the box all your life. You don't throw anything. Right, right. So that was very important to me. So I was thinking about how can I do the layering through objects that you could keep all your life. Mm -hmm. And one of the items that mothers give to their daughters and you never throw is jewelry. Right. So the, what took me two years was to think how could I incorporate the, the scent mm -hmm. into a piece of jewelry. Right, right. So that was, it took me some time. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that was in the back of my mind was that we live in such a image driven world. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all on Instagram, we're all on the iPhones. I mean, you take the subway, <laughs> you, you go to, to a bar, everybody on, is on their phone. Actually, I feel like nobody talks to each other anymore. At but all. That's another problem. So this is rare itself. It's true. <laughs> and, uh, but you know what? We're all very image driven and we right. can s swipe through one image per second. So mm -hmm. we're like bombarded by images. Right. And to build a brand, in a world that is so bombarded by images, you realize that the brands that are being built together are either massive advertising media, which is obviously not my business model because I'm a niche luxury brand, mm -hmm. or through celebrity endorsement. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue by perfume is that, by essence, perfume is invisible. Right. And we have a list of celebrities that is huge that are wearing our perfumes, but nobody knows it. Right. So, you know, sometimes I make, I, I make a joke with my wife and we swipe People magazine, mm. and you know, they tell you what, what with accessory, with jewelry, right. with a bag or pair of shoes the celebrity is wearing. Mm -hmm. But it never says, by the way, she's also wearing a perfume. Right. You know, right. It doesn't interest right. me because it's not visible. So, creating scented jewelry was a way of making perfume visible, mm. giving a face to an essence that, by essence, <laughs> is invisible. Wow. Now, the thing that we have um, learned from mm. our customers for the past year, because we've been doing now jewelry for one year, mm. is, and I, honestly, it's something I didn't think about, but it's actually the most exciting about it, mm. is that, you know, when you put perfume on yourself, it's a pleasure for the others, but it's mm. rarely a pleasure for yourself because we don't smell our own perfume. Right. Mm. Others tell you, you smell good. Right. And you're like, really? Because <laughs> you don't know, you don't right. smell your own perfume at, at one point. Very true. But when you, the women who are wearing scented jewelry, mm -hmm. they get to enjoy their perfume all day long. When you wear it in a, in a bracelet or you're wearing in a ring, each mm. time they pick up their phone, they, they smell their perfume. In the earrings, each time they move their head, they get whips of their perfume. So. 
the number one comment that we're having from our customers mm. is that what's amazing is that they get to enjoy smelling their own perfume on themselves. Mm. They get to have the pleasure of smelling their own perfume. That's, to me, that's ingenious. With Killian Home and its moniker being, uh, now, now correct me if I'm wrong, the moniker is perfume as art? Perfume as an art. As an art, right? So is that, was that your train of thought with what you just said? Like you're trying to put it back onto the pedestal and get people to not just appreciate the scent, but how it's packaged, how it's, because I noticed the candles and the presentation that you did on the candles and the actual candle holder was something <clears throat> excuse me, that people could keep. So with that, are there certain scents that you feel uh, you would stay away from because they don't fit, let's say, the overall look of the brand or the look of the luxury and the art that you're trying to portray? Like, are there certain citrusy, citruses that you may not use? Because I'm really interested in getting to, you know, how you hone in on where you say, okay, this is the scent that represents me. Like, that's the scent. Is there any sense that you would stay away from? Like, they're just off the list no matter what you, what, what you smell. So there's many uh, possible response. Okay. Um, one is that my customer actually is not interested in me giving them citrusy perfumes. Mm -hmm. I don't personally really enjoy wearing citrusy perfumes. Sometimes mm -hmm. in summer, you know, during the day, I like to have something fresh, right. but that's it. Some, I tried one or two times to do a perfume that would be a, a bit more citrusy. Mm -hmm. My customer, that's not what they're expecting from me. Mm. They, where, they go to my brand for rich, dark, sexy scent. Mm. No, if they want citrusy, <laughs> there's many brands that, that offer that world. Very they true. don't come to me for, for that. Very true. Um, now, the other thing, to be honest, is that there is a world of accords um, a type of harmonies, if you want, mm -hmm. that I'm staying very far from mm -hmm. because they sign for me mm -hmm. the epitome of mass in perfumery. Mm -hmm. So all these very overly sugary mm -hmm. perfumes that you can smell sometimes, mm -hmm. I'm str I try to stay, or I don't even try, I do stay very far from them mm -hmm. because those are synthetic molecules mm -hmm. that they pushed in overdose and honestly, you can put whatever you want underneath. It just covers everything. Mm -hmm. So it allows a lot of perfume houses mm -hmm. to have a very strong, very powerful perfume at a very cheap price. Mm -hmm. And this is not who we are. Right, right. Our brand is about quality, richness, elegance, mm -hmm. uh, sensuality, mm -hmm. not about um, offering impact for low price. Low I'm not, I'm not mad at that. So now let's get into the Killian world, like how I said earlier. The clutches that the perfumes come in mm. with, and that's the good and evil. Is yep. that the good and evil? Can you just take me through, I know you have different fragrances. You have uh, addiction, <coughs> um, good and evil. Um, let me get all of them correct. So we have five collections. There you go, do it. <laughs> we have five collections. Mm. The first one that we launched is called L'Oeuvre Noir. Okay. So, which means the black artwork. Was that in 2007? That was the Correct. Okay. October 2007. Mm. And this collection is very much inspired by literature, poetry, um, but done in a modern way, you know, mm. because if you, if you talk like you're in the 19th century, you look like a passé brand and nobody <laughs> wants to wear a grandmother or grandfather perfume. Right. So, um, but I wanted really to combine words in a modern way okay. um, and to express a modern emotion by doing mm -hmm. that. And since then, I launched two sister collections of Love Noir, mm -hmm. Arabian Nights and Asian Tales, which were perfumes that were meant more for a specific culture in mind. Mm -hmm. And then I launched the collection you mentioned, which is called In the Garden of Good and Evil. Right. And this collection is, if you want, a modern metaphor mm -hmm of the myth of the original sin. Mm. When I started working, the, my theme was temptation. You mm -hmm. know? So I was thinking, what are the, today the forms of temptation? What, what does temptation mean in today's world? Mm -hmm. That was the theme that, was, that I was attracted to. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I went back to all forms of temptation and I ended up going to the original temptation, the, the biblical temptation. Right, right. And what was interesting about this theme is that, number one, everybody has the same images that come to their mind. Mm -hmm. We all think about Adam and Eve, obviously, but mm -hmm. we think about 
the snake who tempted Eve. Right. We think about the forbidden fruit, the apple, the mm. object of the temptation. Mm. We think about the, the, the sin of flesh because it's supposed to be hopeful. I'm so happy that they, they disobeyed. <laughs> Imagine what would you be alive without it. You and I both. I'm sorry, you and uh, I both. So, and what was interesting about this theme is that the object of the temptation being a forbidden fruit, mm -hmm. I decided to build the entire collection on forbidden fruit perfumes. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting. Um, and then, of course, the snake was too good not to play with. <laughs> so, I collect personally vintage cigarette boxes from the 1920s, 30s, mm -hmm. which I think were absolutely gorgeous items that a man or woman could carry. Right. I don't smoke, but uh, I, I love the object. I, yeah. And uh, I got inspired by those cigarette cases mm -hmm. and I put a, a designed a snake on top of a cigarette box and ga it gave birth to the clutch. Oh, the, I mean, the clutches are amazing. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong, they also are, are able to fit iPhones? Phones, lipstick, mascara, everything is meant so all the necessary items a woman goes out at night with mm. could find their place in it. Oh, so it's, it's a dual role right there. They can, it can carry their perfume and then they can use it Absolutely. for Absolutely. Oh. <sighs> You're amazing me right now. And we launched last year our latest collection called Addictive State of Mind, mm -hmm. which is a collection built on addictions. Mm. So that was f in interesting because the, the the thinking, the creative process was mm -hmm. to think about addiction that I could translate into the world of perfume. Mm -hmm. Addiction to games, for example, right. I don't know how to do that in a perfume. Right, right. But addiction to coffee, mm. now, I'm, now you're talking, you know, right, I can right. do a coffee accord. Mm. Addiction to cigar Monte Cristo, mm -hmm. again, I could recreate a cigar Monte Cristo accord. Mm. And then I also created an, addic uh, an accord that Smells a little bit like cannabis. A touch. Oh, really? A touch. Oh, you wouldn't happen to have any of that around, would you? You're talking about the cannabis? Or no, the no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble as well. No, 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 no. Just the. No, uh, we do have it. It's called Smoke for the Soul. Really? Mm hmm. Smoke for the Soul. That's really it. Now, now, now just to, to touch on the different fragrances, when do you know it's time? To release another one do you sit there and say okay well it's a new season new fragrance or do you or you have to be inspired like it has to hit you it's like you know what now i'm ready to do another one or well no you have to be inspired but inspiration yeah. has n is not something i'm lacking with like i have so many perfumes that are i could launch tomorrow but i'm not going to overflow the market with so many perfumes you know right, right. so um, i'm launching actually less and less mm. to give more time to every son to find its it's public, you know what? Gotcha. It's fans. Uh, but if, if I could do it my way, I mean, I could launch five a season. Really? Yeah, creation is not something, inspiration is not something I'm lacking with. Well, that's good. Now, now it's, it's funny that you said that about uh, releasing less and less because that really goes into the play of when, you, when you're talking about, when I read about you, that you really like for the consumer to discover your brand mm. and really have the time for it. So are you planning, as far as with the, now the Killian home, with the candles and the hanging tassels that I saw yesterday that are great, great tassels, by the way. He actually has a sack where there are silicone beads, beads that filled with oil. The, and they last two years. Two years. I paid attention yesterday. Mm -hmm. so, so now, are you still interested, just to go on to another uh, topic that I saw that was very interesting about you. Uh, are you still interested in doing bespoke? Yeah, uh, we absolutely Chris, do bespoke. Chris Collins, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, how would someone get in contact, or is it you select whom you would want to do a bespoke? Yeah, I do two bespokes a season. Okay. I only okay. take two a season. It's okay. a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, I do it for special customers. I mm. um, actually have repeat customers who mm. come every year for the, because they want a new bespoke <laughs> every year. Wow. Uh, but I, it's a lot of work, so um, I want to do it well, mm -hmm. and it, to do it well, I need to spend time with mm -hmm. the customer, mm -hmm. um, so I prefer to only do a very limited. Now, how did that all come about, that process? Was it something already in the back of your mind, and you were just looking for 
the right person to do it with or did someone approach you and say you know what can you make a fragrance for me and that kind of birthed the whole bespoke exactly thing. there's a customer who came for the first time asking me if i would do a bespoke for her mm -hmm. i said yes we did it and then i proposed it to 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 others and then it became available oh, wow that's interesting okay so now and this is in my research now you're physically presenting a new fragrance or collection that you're passionate about. So with the Killing at Home, what would you say for the people that are going to be watching? How is it going to differentiate in the marketplace from what they already use to kind of scent their homes? Because I know you were talking about something that's not going to be available until 2016, so I'll leave that out. Yeah. What made you choose home? Was it, was it the fact that someone came to you and said, can I use these scents in my home? Or did you just think, you know what, the market now is ready to actually have my scents and, and usually, and then just use it for their entire host, house. So was it, you no, know, I mean, the, the, the home products, candles, um, mm -hmm. scented sticks, um, mm -hmm. this is something that is vastly used by many people. Mm -hmm. What I always found, because I'm using what exists today in the market, right. not to name any brand, but what mm -hmm. I always found is that those scented objects mm -hmm. were always lacking design. Mm -hmm. They are as simple as it's, they are possibly. <laughs> and uh, at one point, especially when they've been used a few times, mm -hmm. the object actually doesn't even look good anymore. Mm -hmm. So my entire thinking process was, how can I give to my customers an object that would scent your home in a beautiful way, this is a given, mm -hmm. but also would be actually a gorgeous object in your living room, in your bedroom, or in your walk-in closet. Right, right, right. So the whole design standpoint was how can I bring materials that would feel warm and luxury mm -hmm. in anybody's decor. Okay. That's why the collection is entirely built on black lacquered wood mm -hmm. and real mother of pearl inlaid in the wood and then varnished and polished. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think they, they look like real beautiful objects. Exactly. They're decorative pieces as well. Exactly. As jewelry. That's, exactly. That's, and okay, I'm going to ask one last question. And this is one that I love to ask because I think it's a, it's a reflective question. So what would the Killian now, successful brand, tell the Killian that was writing the thesis paper about how to get to this point? What would you say you have to navigate through? What would be your advice to the old Killian who was writing that thesis paper? Honestly, it's so much work to build a brand. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I knew back then mm -hmm. what I know now, I think I would have never done it. Really? It's tremendous. The dedication, the... Um, it's a 24-7, every single day mm -hmm. uh, attention, wow. you know, because you are still building a brand competing with everyone else around you. Right. Right. And when I go to a department stores, I'm still fighting for spaces against Chanel, against Joe, against Tom Ford. Mm -hmm. Still the same fight, you know. Wow. And the, the world today, the, your market, if you mm -hmm. want, it's not your home country anymore. Mm. It's the world, right. you know? Right. And in order to build a brand, you need to travel and to expand your fan base in the world. And do interviews like this. So, yes. So, <laughs> you know what? You have to be somehow in your studio creating the, up, the products of tomorrow. You still have to be traveling in all the countries to promote right. the product that you already launched. Right. In the middle, I still have two kids that I have to oh, raise. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and a new wife. Oh, oh. <laughs> very lovely lady. We met her, very lovely lady. So no, it's just, it's a lot to take in. It's yeah. really a lot to take in. Yeah. Is it something that is reward rewarding? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I feel like it has been the biggest reward ever. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel very proud of what I have accomplished. Mm -hmm. But. It's, it's a dedication. I mean, you have to know that you're in there and it's going to consume your entire life. Wow. Like sometimes they ask me, what are your hobbies? And I'm like, I don't have any hobbies anymore. <laughs> no more hobbies. My life is the company and my family. And that takes me, takes 200% of my time. Okay. Now, I lied to you. That wasn't the last question. I have one more and it's a speed round, but it's a quick, it's one to just have fun with. So I'm going to give you an either or and you just tell me which one you would prefer. Okay. Ice cream or coffee? Coffee. 
coffee. Flying or driving? Flying. Summer or winter? Summer. Summer. France or Lake Como, Italy? France. Okay, and the last one is New York or? New York. Thank you. There we go. That's all I want. <laughs> well, this is Chris Colley with Killian Hennessy. I hope you enjoyed the interview. This is our Influencers series. We want to thank him so much. We're in Killian's Boutique, which you can come to in New York. It's on 804 Washington Street in the Meatpacking District. We'll see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just like